Well, there's a new John Woo movie in production, and from the sounds of things, it could actually be pretty cool. A dialogue-free revenge actioner might play to Woo's directorial strengths like nothing else he's done in years. In the meantime, continually trying to follow up my four classics video, I'm in a similar position as I was at 15 when I first discovered those films and ended up hungry for more. Scraping the bottom of the barrel. Drop that gun or she's dead. I said drop it. Don't worry, Casey. You got milk. Drop the gun, I mean it. I have to be careful here because something I learned from the comments of that video is that virtually every John Woo film has diehard defenders. So someone will probably recommend Blackjack for a Criterion release in the comments this time, and I love that. I'm a huge fan, and I'm also very biased, but I've never found one of his films to be a waste of time. He's just a great entertainer and a distinctive voice even when he's working with shitty material. I only maintain that the operatic, emotional, and stylistic heights reached by ABT-1, The Killer, Bullet in the Head, and Hard Boiled haven't been matched by him or any of his imitators. But evidently, there are films that come close. Face Off, ABT-2, and Hard Target, not necessarily in that order, would be the usual suspects paid lip service here. Personally, I'd nudge forward a different film, at least making the case for it as his most underrated. It's one I was never able to track down until very recently. Just Heroes, co-directed by Shaw Brothers veteran Wu Ma from 1989. Now, John Woo supposedly directed about 60% of the film, though I'm surprised it's not more, as his fingerprints are all over it and not just in the action direction. You've got dependable work from John Woo regulars like Danny Lee and T. Lung, lots of emotive jazz montages, and a very homoerotic beer drinking scene. After a respected triad elder is assassinated and a controversial named successor refuses to take up his mantle, his underlings, once great friends, are set against each other, suspicious of who planned the hit and vying for the position of power. This is actually quite a densely plotted film at 90 minutes no less, with some interesting twists and surprises, and characters make unexpected decisions in the name of honor and loyalty. Who you sympathize with and who you hate is constantly in flux. There's also a spicy love triangle and familiar themes of cynicism and nostalgia for a once honorable world. If Bullet in the Head was John Woo riffing on the Deer Hunter, Just Heroes is definitely his riff on The Godfather, parts one and two. This video just got even more biased as these are also films I enjoy, like just a little bit. You've got the respected aging crime lord who gives to his community being assassinated in a fashion that blends the hit on Don Corleone with the hit on Sonny at the toll booth, while a Fredo-esque character haplessly looks on. You've got the ambitious sleazy gangster who urges the family to take their business in a new direction, which they disagree to do with great consequence. There are hospital and funeral scenes that directly echo part one, Michael's sick cravat, and more. I can see how some might find all this distracting given the Godfather's cultural ubiquity, but as with Bullet in the Head, it didn't bug me. This is a text being reinterpreted with a wildly different style and focus, as opposed to trying to copy and emulate the style and focus of the original. It's the same reason both Scarface films work, that both City on Fire and Reservoir Dogs work, that both First Reformed and Winterlight work. What makes them all invigorating is different, despite their similarities. But enough about intertextuality and plotting, how are the action scenes? Fucking sick. John Woo was in his prime in 1989, the year he brought us The Killer and hot off the success of ABT 1 and 2. Maybe these shootouts are a little smaller in scale, but still, they hit hard. Woo's endless creativity and economy with action scenes never ceases to amaze. Give this man a simple warehouse or mansion he can wreck, some squibs and blanks, and he'll give you an inventive, hyper-choreographed action opera full of inventive little moments like this. Fuck! 
In my opinion, the film's only real misstep, and it is an annoying one, is a brief metatextual subplot involving an ABT fanboy who spouts unfunny fourth wall breaking asides and references to that film. They make this kid, who's an encapsulation of many young ABT fans, out to be a total idiot, without much grace or nuance. Then, after the climax, the directors seem to wag their fingers at us for glamorizing that film's characters when A Better Tomorrow was so hyper-stylized as to invite that. It's funny, it reminds me of Coppola adding that disturbing prostitute scene to The Godfather Part 2 after being criticized for glamorizing the Mafia in the original film. Hard to say whether this was Wu's decision, Soy Hark's, or some studio-sanctioned nonsense, but it rings very false. Especially because otherwise, this feels like a solid extension of the Wu films I most admire in tone and direction. It truly was a surprise nostalgic treat to finally see a new John Wu film in a familiar time and genre, and with familiar faces. And even more of a treat to find it, well, quite good overall. I feel bad once again recommending a film that isn't the easiest to come by, but if you're a John Wu nut like me and have the opportunity to get your hands on a copy, do not pass it up. And hopefully, in another year or so's time, I'll be able to review another solid film from an undisputed action master.